Okay. Um, so what came out of our 2016 meeting really was that although people published number of phylogenies on the mannequins, um, they disagreed. They were mostly based on small numbers of genes. There's not really a strong consensus of relationship. A number of years ago, NSF had funded a large group to do a big phylogeny of every single sub species. They should have all the native mannequins, but they have been a little slow to get into the published stuff. So after our 2016 meetings, I really began trying to lobby with the people of that sub Austin grant, particularly Rob Brumfield, um, with Barry Berry, and Bill Craycraft, to try and push this through um, and really get it motivated to go through. They identified a post up where I wanted to work on this. Um, and so I've been really trying to sort of work carefully with Raphael, um, help me get some data analyzed and get things moving through. So thanks in part to Sita Raphael and Movement We have been working now um, on this phylogeny. Um, and of course, you know, Raphael should be here, he's got his postdoc, he's working on mammals. Um, nevertheless, he's actually <laughs> it wasn't my choice. I wasn't paying yet, because I didn't have any say what he did. Um, so I just keep telling him, don't forget the mannequin. So he finally actually started to work on a manuscript and everything. And so I'm finally optimistic to actually get some nervous to pop forward. So um, you can see this be successful at it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's yeah. see. I, I assume the forward button is that yeah. the back yeah. Yeah. now. Which you one? have to go yeah. to the actual presentation. Ah, that's why we're in Finder right now. So. Is this a PDF <laughs> or a... the interpretive dance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we are. All right. <laughs> so, um, what they've got is an almost all species uh, phylogeny. One made of palm nuts with an output there. Um, I'm not going to go through a lot of the technical details about the analogy of the data. The point is what they tried to do is sample most sites throughout the entire genome. They sample loci that are relatively conserved, or the logistics of how the molecular lab works is not that, so they're called only conserved elements. Um, although they're ultra conserved, there are actually reason something that are variable. So there is some data there to actually infer the uh, phylogeny. They tend to be sort of then short segments, but the advantage of them is you've got so many of them throughout the entire genome that typically you can get a fairly um, reasonable amount of data. They also had put in some regions that were more commonly used in exon intron regions that targeted genes that have been used in other avian phylogenies um, as well. Um, and they analyzed in a variety of different ways. I guess that's going to become slightly apparent when I go through some of this. So, no further ado. This is the genus level phylogeny that comes out of this. I circled two groups because those are places where our gender are probably not monophyletic. But I didn't know, you know, I didn't want to draw the detail there. So um, those two groupings are a little bit more mixed. But outside of that, this basic structure comes up really well supported in every kind of analysis that was done on the data. So that apart is quite solid through here. Uh, going through. And what's going on up in I think a lot of people have known the Anselmo was not monophyletic, and so Irenaeus and uh, nest inside there. But this basic topology is sort of the Anselmo, um, and the position that Irenaeus was in it is consistent across the various different analyses. Um, we get a little bit of rearrangement. Within that one place in the Anselmo, those two species always come together um, and yet in different analyses they rearrange the other two um, and typically they always look with really high support um, but this is the most common rearrangement that comes up in analyses that I think are I probably plus most um, all right What's going on in Antilopia Puritipia is a bit more of a mess. Um, and because Raphael got really interested in the fact that even with all this data, couldn't actually 
get a consistent answer. He spent a lot of time in putting together nice images um, on particularly what's going on here. And um, so he's colored. If he grouped, because some of you in fact probably can't see all that. And I wanted to use the slides he put together so I can mess with it myself. But, um, red here is Boliviana. The light blue here is Cariola lanceolata lunaris. Green is Claudeta, and then orange is Antilopia. All right, I don't, have not figured out if you took these sort of four colors, um, I think consistently, I haven't named the place, so it's called four colors, and you rearrange them in all possible topologies, you would get more than has shown up here, but it doesn't actually seem like you'd get many more. This is all sorts of various rearrangements. There are 15 possible trees. Okay, so there are 15 uh, if you can, Assume monophyly of Okay, that's true. Um, and we get, I don't know, something like five or six different rearrangements in here. Um, these are support levels, but you consider good support in a very person to person, but this is a data that looks to be pretty high bar or up to two years ago. So you can see in some cases, support's pretty low for some of these methods. Just the UCEs. And I put the Exxon Enzyme data, I've got to go back there because some question about it exactly what the did with that. Um, I just got the manuscript a week ago and I think that and I have not actually sat down to look at um, to do that. I know when he added everything together, it was not changing, at least for the basic graphs analogy, it came out pretty much the same. But of his analyses, he's doing more of these top three steps to the exon portion. I'm a very concerned about the intron portion. Introns are more variable, they often double the their signals, and I need to check with him on that when he's making sure exactly what he's done. But, yeah. So I hopefully, and I don't know if that's going to change things or not. Um, and I could go through for anyone who's interested, you can check later about what all these analyses are. Many of you guys are really probably just interested big picture, and I won't bore you with that, um, but the point is, we're not, I'm still not completely sure what probably is definitely going on here, um, other than I said, if I had to, yes, if you asked me to put money on, you told me I had to pick one, um, that's what I would pick, and Ed agreed with me, I asked him what he would pick, and still, based on the analogy, that's what it's still possible to well, if you, if you, yeah, some of this low support, some of these ones with low support, if you believe. If you were the most, well, none of the trees that, none of the trees that are really good, are just, like, what, like, so. No, we were just, if, if when we. If you collapse all these nodes so there was a polytone, okay, so yeah. that would be what the argument was, that's it. And that's recovery trees. No. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were just sort of saying, well, gee, if 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 you were the most skeptical person and you took the least resolved analysis and collapsed anything you weren't confident in, you could still hold out for Carexipia monophyla. It's not the most plausible <laughs> hypothesis. <laughs> if you want to, yes, if you want to keep special. And, and said, yeah, this is arguing for the you could take some of this data and change it. All right, so here's the whole tree. There will be a quiz in about five minutes. Very quickly, take good notes. Um, I just want to point out a couple of things. So, this is sort of a basic 
but on the previous slide, we saw the things that Rack Knowledge and the things that Rack Knowledge create. Um, all of these little dark boxes, and you see there's 100% support. So every sort of uh, permutation of knowledge is okay, that both these nodes that have open and little boxes by them are ones that do not receive 100% support. We see all of the uh, analysis that we've done that into this. Here, um, not surprisingly, out there, there is going to be an Ethiopia, but we know data is a little bit problematic. Um, uh, CIPRA, although this is not 100%, um, every topology I looked at gave the exact same set of relationships. So I think there's a lot of consistency across the knowledge we picked up over across uh, knowledge groups. Here's a group Make nice images, and you see what happens when I have to make images. Um, turn up the tracking. Um, so, like, you have to paste them sometimes in your document. But here's the sort of topology that was shown in the figure earlier. This is the one that comes up in most of the analyses. Um, so, I think, I can't remember, the SPD for pets, one or two of the natural analyses, but this. Uh, um, this one came up in like two of the three analyses, and you can see that that's kind of in one. So, again, this is the most sort of robust topology. It shows up in, um, I think, some of the analyses that many people would consider as our most best vetted methods for doing this kind of thing. Um, and so, this is the topology and it's the most solid that I wanted people to at least know there are a couple of other. Apologies here, um, and I can point out a little bit about um, how they differ here. Most of them here put um, the Sidoria and whatever they were um, together. This group here separates them, however, and puts the Sidoria sister to everything else. And the other thing that moves around a little bit, some of these is exactly where Coronado goes through there. Those are the sort of primary um, differences that are through there. We do get, although most topologies group these three together, there is one some rearrangement to some of these. I don't know if people have seen this CNN paper that came out last year that suggested um, that um, golden crown mannequin was a hybrid species. Okay, so there's a golden crown mannequin there. Um, and that the two parentals here is a snow cap and the local crown right there. And so some of the, if that's sort of true, um, some of the sort of rearrangement is going to be just a little bit data on which low site you include and what parental site it came out of. It's thought to be a fairly recent hybrid speciation. We're actually talking about ways of going through this data and seeing if we can find confirmation of that. Um, some of our more variable low site data. Okay, so um, there are obviously some still unknown uh, issues within the sort of percipient of the group and the lipidic group, but in other groups, things seem stable. And I know I ran through that fairly quickly to give you the big picture, but I also know the presentation's up on the wiki side. And I printed out the main phylogeny figure. I printed up a number of copies of that for people who wanted to sit down and stare at it because I had a feeling some of you guys would. And so I've got a dozen copies of that printed up for people to come and share. You know, I got into this mannequin group in part because I'm really interested in looking at things like evolution of sexual traits and various other kinds of traits in a sort of comparative framework. So I'm excited there is now actually a framework we can put this in. Um, and so I want other people to be thinking about what are sort of traits that are interesting and useful. We talked about sort of trying to get some traits um, map on this, and now actually at a stage we can start to do that. So you guys can have other things to think about what does this mean ecologically about some of these things or behaviorally and so forth. It'll be interesting. I'd love any feedback if you're sort of putting this manuscript together. 
right now, Raphael actually got really focused more in the analytical issues with this, part because he's probably a manipologist or something. Um, but now he's working on mammals. Um, so the birds and their behavior are not as first and foremost interest. And but he's found all these problems. He's really focused this currently it's still the very um, analytically, but that means that there's potential maybe a little bit like a little biology about the birds in some of that. So people have a couple thoughts about things we might talk about in the manuscript to bring up a little bit more of the organismal aspect of that would be good. But also it's now a resource for the um, looking at and thinking about moving forward now to start to uh, pull some of these other data sets together across all the different species and look at them now in a framework, other than the first people who are interested in the development of the uh, <laughs> Look at which would have completely good answers to that. So, um, that we can get access to some of the trees with plant planes and um, Raphael's not made a sort of 